Today, we're going to learn how to run SQL in the browser. So by the end of this video, we'll see how to create this, where, as you can see, it is doing live updates based on this query. Very cool. And this is a toy example, but once you have this set up, you can do just about anything you need. So this is the entire API will be shown here that I use to create a game built around SQL. What you're seeing here, the core, the interactions with the SQL.js library are the exact same as what we'll be building today. But as you can see, we've expanded on it a little bit to make a full-on game. That seems like a pretty niche use case, and I thought so as well. But there are almost 11,000 stars on GitHub, and there are 30,000 weekly downloads on NPM. And you did click on this video, so there are obviously some more common use cases than I thought. So I'm genuinely curious, if you are using this library right now, or you plan on using it soon, go ahead and leave a comment about what your use case is. And once you've done that, let's go ahead and get started. So here is our example app. This is in Vue.js, but 90% of what we're doing today, you can just transplant directly into some React, Svelte, Angular, whatever you're using. All right, so first we install sql.js. I've already done that. And hit npm install, yarn install, and you're good to go. Next, we're going to be importing init sql.js from sql.js and then running this. So this is an asynchronous operation. And so you're going to need top level await. This can be a challenge in some environments. Uh, how we do this in Vue is this is wrapped in a suspense component. Your framework may do things a little bit differently, but make sure that you get this uh, top level await or you run it in a before mount hook or something similar. All right, so we've got SQL and we've got the database. Let's go ahead and log out the database. And you'll see that this is something that is actually not very useful, but it does show that we have gotten the database. We've created a new one. And if we create a second database, then you'll see that this will have different information. But once again, this is not information that's useful to you. This is just to show that it's working. But let's do something that is useful. And so we're going to learn two other functions, run and exec. There are a lot more functions that you could learn, but this is all that I've needed in order to run an entire game off of this. And so we've got run, which executes an SQL query and ignores the return value. And then we have exec, which basically does the same thing, except it also returns the result. Now, this database object contains all of those values, and we can get them out again with an exec statement with a query. So we're just going to do select star from user. And we can go ahead and console.log that to see what we get. And here we see that this is an array with one result, and that result contains columns, which are the column names, ID and name, and then the values. And for the values, you have an item for each row in the database that gets pulled back. And then each of those items is an array that matches up with the columns. And so you can see that if we change this to select name from user, then what gets returned is We've got the columns of name and then the values with just one item in each value array. And of course we can do where ID equals two and that will narrow it down even further. And so this is the core of it. You can take these three functions, init sqljs, db.run, and db.exec, oh, and of course, sql.database to create the new database. And you can do just about anything you want. 
because you can create tables, you can insert, you can do queries, you can do everything you can do with a basic SQL query. So that's our data. Let's go ahead and get this displaying nicely. So first we will go ahead and assign this to a variable. So this will be the results. And let's go ahead and get the first result uh, because this returns an array for some reason. But whatever the reason, we get the result and then we have the uh, columns and the values. And we could uh, log those again, or we could just put them directly in here. So here, now they're displaying, let's go ahead and get star from all the users. So we've got like a little table going. So here we've got our columns and our values. Good, we can make this a little bit nicer. I've already built an SQL display uh, component. And we'll go ahead and import this. Then we'll go ahead and use it in our template. And now it's showing up pretty nicely. This is basically just putting this in a very standard table and doing a little bit of font highlighting and spacing. And we're just looping over the values in the columns. All right, so how can we make this interactive? Well, there's a couple steps. We're gonna to need to create the text area. And so this is where the user is gonna input the information, the query. And then we need to connect that to these results. And so we can get that with uh, the computed and ref. So let's go ahead and we'll import computed and ref from view. And this is gonna look different if you are in React or another framework, but the concept should be the same. There is very similar stuff in all the frameworks. And so first we're gonna do the const query is equal to a ref, and we're gonna start it off as select star from user. And here we're gonna put a model to connect this and once we save that we'll see that it's showing up here and we'll be able to change it here and we want that change to be reflected with the uh, results so we're gonna need to do a computed property so I'm gonna make a computed here this is gonna be a function that go ahead and get the results from executing the query and send that back to this variable. And here we go now. This is not actually working because we made a mistake with our computed property. So this decomposition is not part of the computed so it will not get rerun. Uh, but we can, instead of doing it here, just do result.columns and result.values. And that will result in what we want. There we go. So we have our fully interactive SQL running on the browser. And that's all for today. The power here is pretty amazing. You don't need to learn anything else about SQL.js in order to make something fairly complex. You just have to do a bunch of other stuff in your regular framework. So go ahead, let me know what you're using this for in the comments, as well as what you'd like to hear about next time.